Okay, so I'm here with fabulous Lori Petty. That's and, actually my real name. Which is actually your real name, not yeah. a stage name. Fabulous Lori Petty. <laughs> fabulous <laughs> Lori Petty is yeah. the real name. I yeah. love it. Who, actress, director, Dynamo. Right. And we're talking, what does soul food mean to you? Talk to me. What does soul food mean to you, Lori? Well, I mean, we all know the, you know, triple, quadruple, quintuple, OG meaning of soul food. Right. Right. Which, um, you know, being born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in a trailer park, we had those, uh, you know, butter beans and, you know, coffee jacks. And the trad soul food. The, that the, we, the tragic yeah. soul food, yes. <laughs> no, we, had, <laughs> we had the, we had, <laughs> we had the fried pork chops. And, yes, you know, yeah. yes, yes. And, and I, and the, the Crisco can with you put all the grease in from every That you save and egg. reuse right. over and over and then lovingly. You make yes. your eggs in it the next morning. Yep, and yeah. it tastes just like fried chicken. <laughs> Which is is that where it tastes just like chicken came from? I have to we have to ask ourselves, so go ahead. <laughs> um, yes. So yes, and the mac and cheese is the, 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 the yeah. Right, right. But um, you know, soul food as a vegan, um, mm -hmm. and as a twenty fourteen you know, I think soul food is, is food that is made with love and intention and that that nourishes every cell of your body. That's to, right. You know, you're either, as you know, Stephanie, I'm not telling you nothing. You either um, are regenerating or degenerating. That's correct. And so what you put in your body, it's either fighting off that nastiness or it's saying, thank you, thank you, thank right. you. Right, thank you. Right, thank and you. It's, and it's, there's oxygen and the, the blood is happy and right. the brain gets happy and right. the heart gets happy, right. and the, you know. Right. So, right. you know, that's soul food. The, the soul food is the intention. You know, I remember sitting on your floor and, you know, you bringing me out this plate, you know. And How I did I meet like, Lori? I was just like, look at <laughs> what she gave me. I mean, You're so humble and sweet. I can't. That's soul food. In that's my barbaric, food. unrenovated apartment. You know, I'm gut renovating my apartment, <laughs> which is its own New York story. We won't get into it here. And lovely Lori came over with a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. And just plopped right down like anybody and just chilled. Like, well, and that's like, you know, that's well, beyond rock star chairs. qualities. That's why I sat on the floor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the truth. Um, so, okay, back to you. And, you know, you're from Chattanooga. Yes, ma'am. That's amazing. And you and me, let's talk about how you arrived in L.A. How did this all happen? Well, did you always act? What's the story? Well, so I was born to a 19-year-old evangelical minister who looked like black and white Elvis Presley and skinny and a 18-year-old mother in a, a trailer park in Tennessee. Wow. And then she proceeded to have two more sisters, my, my or babies, my two sisters who I love desperately. And right. uh, we're all very happy and healthy now. Nice. And, um, so, but my parents divorced when I was 10. Okay. Because my mom said, you know, these babies ain't going through that, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. that forced upon, you know, getting baptized for, you know, show and, you know. That's really a lot. <laughs> and they're always the most yeah. afflicted children. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, those, right, exactly. Right. And we all had to wear the same clothes, like dress alike and go right. stand on the stage and sing. That's a lot. So she at 28 took us and we moved to Iowa and moved in with her sister. And then I was through. You know me. I was through already. I was through. I was born through. So, um, you know, I'd be like, may I be, before I could get out, may I be excused in 10th grade? They were like, just go, just leave, just get out of my classroom. So I was, right. I'm driving, you know, a 1975 uh, pine green Lincoln Continental playing the Isley Brothers in my eight track. You know. Oh, God. No, so fly. I'm just, I mean, why I lived, I don't know how I lived, how I made it to be this old. So we had a church once when I was like nine. Okay. And the church was, which, you know, 200 people at the most. I right. mean, it was one, I'm lying, it was 100 people. So, <laughs> at the most. you know, when you just slide the numbers in the, in the yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we didn't even have a building fund. That's how you wow. know, bad we were. <laughs> wow, I love it, I so, love it. Uh, my father likes to go to the church, go to the parsonage, which is the house connected to the church. Right. And, Give me this or that. So I went over there, and we never had TV on. We never watched TV. I don't know how the TV was on. Right. And I hear, when I had you. And right. I was like, oh. who is the angel singing? Right. There's an angel singing right. in the house. <laughs> and so I follow this sound, wow. and it's the Jackson 5 cartoon. Wow. And I start crying. I'm like, you know, 
eight or nine years old, and right. that was joy. I heard joy. You heard joy. And I went, I'm going into television. Right. Like, then, then I need to go I want in to there. to be in that box with him. Right, where the happy people I are. Love it. And this was, it was even a, a it was a, a cartoon. It wasn't even Michael Jackson. Right, type right, Jackson. right, right. So then but I found But there's the vibration, the vibration. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Then I, and it was the whole song. And yeah. then I found out that was a real person. And then I found out I could go in there, and that was, I was over. <laughs> and so I told my mom about it. And so my mom would let me. She'd send me back over to the church or to the parsonage, right? So I could listen to more music because we couldn't listen to music. You weren't allowed. Mm -mm. Wow. wow. Couldn't wear pants. Couldn't. Wow. Couldn't. You said couldn't wear I, pants. My, yeah, my mom. I mean, she poor thing couldn't do a lot of stuff. So anyway, that's how when I found out that I could go in there and I could make people happy. Yes. And I could touch them and I could. They could be going through just hell. Right. And then they could listen to me or watch me and laugh and Connected forget about the way, troubles, right. you know? Right. Right. So, anyway, that's how I became, wanted to become an actor. Because I am really started out as a painter and a writer. Wow. Now, how many 19-year-old women do you know that get paid to do that, right? So, <laughs> how many of any? <laughs> that's like winning the lottery. Exactly. Right. So I was like, you know, being being, you know, 19 and pretty and talented, right, right. the easiest thing to do was to like be on one life to live. Okay? Right, right, right. <laughs> but, Which is, you know, lots of respectable <laughs> Oh Selma. yeah. Got the Queen Selma, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Yeah, lots of respectable. So go ahead. But Starting it's the, point it's the, the easiest way. Right. To get on. To get going. Right. Is acting. And uh, I mean it's fun. Right. But now now um I'm doing season three of Orange is the New Black. Yes! Which, Talk to me. Which, I, so... which I can just now release, say to the world. <laughs> because two days ago it came out that, that I was on it. And I've been on it for a couple weeks. But so I couldn't you're... tell anybody. Right. It was a secret. So then it came out like a couple days ago. I feel so honored. <laughs> and um, <laughs> But you know what? It's hard for me because... I'm a writer and a director. Exactly. You know, I directed exactly. this film, The Poker House, which was, um w broke Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, it was. Can Jennifer, we talk about that? It was Jennifer Lawrence's first film. Right. Chloe Moretz is in it. Bokeem Woodbine's in it's it. It's an amazing film. I, I love it. Clark Peters is in it. Right. Come right. On now. Right. It's right. crazy. David Allen Greer's in it. It's gorgeous. Um. So yeah, I wrote that, uh, which is based on a true story, and Jennifer Lawrence played me, and she had never been in a film before. So I give her a look. I give her 100% credit for of her life. Of course. It's all her. Of course. Right? But I did, you know, you were the pound first. her. I pound her, pounded her with 30 years of experience yeah. every day. It's amazing. So, yeah, then I got, in, then I got really uh, fortunate and... Um, Unfortunate? I don't know. I got very fortunate. You got did, very fortunate. And did about four classic films, modern classics. That's right. That when people see me on the street and scream, I Tank have girl. to, but I have to like, I have to interpret the scream. <laughs> it's like, is this a Point Break, League of Their Own, Tank Girl, or Free Willy scream? There are different screams. There are different ones. Got a different timber. Each one has a different timber. There are different ones. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Does this person want me to sign their arm? Right. Which one is yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Which one is it? And so, okay, so. You started out, let's talk about that in terms of food. You started out eating pork chops. Oh, right? yeah. I didn't know. Okay. Talk to I me about your food know. transformation. Go ahead. You didn't I know. I didn't know that, that you, well, I was very poor when right. I was a child. You know, so shit happens. You just eat, I mean, potato soup there? was good. Right. 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 And if you had butter, come on now. Well, then it was really good. Come on now. And then you know you take the the bottom of the of the Dorito nacho cheese bag and you squish that shit up. That was my brother's religion. With water, <laughs> but you put some water in that with some noodles. What? What? <laughs> you had some serious. This is all taste based. You know what I'm saying? If it tastes good, then it is good. Right. Right. So that's what your so, consciousness was originally. I had no idea. No, I just knew you were hungry and you had to eat something. Right. Right. So, I mean, I was a big track star, and I was eating um, a Snicker bar before I ran. Now, that was about the dumbest thing you could do. And nobody there to tell you any different? No, because right. it's the 80s, and right. like, no one... Nobody was thinking no. about that. Your average supermarket, you could get actual rotten food at your average supermarket. Things that are completely unheard of now, yeah. But, um, I found out 
on Point Break. It was very late in life, but on Point Break, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we were all young and beautiful and right. all that. You didn't have to but, worry yet. But we had a trainer and we had a dietitian, nutrition, and we had all we had everything. Right. I mean, we were surfing for months and working right. out. So that's an awesome gift. It was a huge gift. Yeah. And so they made us eat super clean. It was very clean, but mm -hmm. it was beef, chicken, fish, you know, right. and then, you know, vegetables. And right. So when they started making it clean, right. I could taste the food. Right. So when I started tasting the food, I went, I huh. don't want meat. I don't like it. Right. Why am I eating hamburgers? Right. I don't want hamburgers. I don't want bread. Right. You know, I was... So they right. said, that's fine. You can just eat chicken. So then I got to the point a couple weeks later. I'm like, I don't want chicken. Wow. So you just. So then they said fish. And I said, I don't want. I said, can I just eat vegetables? And they said, of course. Wow. So in so 1990, kind of I became. intuitively like, detoxed, yeah. essentially. No, that's my amazing. body did it. It just did it. I yeah. didn't want it. Yeah. And so since 1990, I've been a vegan. I love it. Because it's just what agrees with me. Yeah. And I don't preach at people. They can do what they want. They're, they know how to read. You know what people I mean? who are really at ease <laughs> with themselves don't right. have to preach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're happy with your diet. You're doing what you need to right. do. And what works for you. No, I'm not trying to proselytize or pontificate. I'm just saying, you know, you do you. What feels right but for you. Let me tell you, if you just tried for two days, you might feel a little better. And your skin might look better. You might be happier. And you right. might feel like going outside. Right. Right. <laughs> As opposed to sitting inside with your Dorito ramen <laughs> concoction, whatever that is. You might want to, you might feel better. But. That's amazing. I mean, as an actor, you're a shapeshifter. You get to live right. in these different roles, these different skins. Sissy Spacek talks about like having picked up a southern accent, I think, for coal miner's daughter. Yeah. You picked up veganism. How dope is that? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, my friend, this is my plate of vegan love to you. <laughs> uh, spiced cauliflower. Oh, that was graceful. Spiced cauliflower. Polenta cakes. Mushroom hash. Vegan collard greens. Oh, <laughs> what? See, you I'm want some yeah. Well, of course I do, but first I'm going to taste it. Is it too hot? It shouldn't be too hot. It should be okay so far. It's a little blowing. It should be okay hot. Yeah, I'll see y'all later. <laughs>